So of course, any change in the determinants of exchange rate introduced in a previous lesson can cause a change in the demand or supply equations of dollars in India. For example, in a previous lesson, I taught you the acronym TIPSY, T-I-P-S-Y. This stands for the tastes and preferences of domestic and foreign consumers, which a change in foreign or domestic consumers' tastes can lead to a change in the demand and or the supply of a currency in the Forex market. We talked about relative interest rates. That's what the I stands for. So we had T for tastes of consumers. I is relative interest rates. The P stood for relative price levels. That's inflation rates at home and abroad. A change in domestic inflation can cause a change in demand for imports and therefore a change in demand for foreign currencies and so on. Uh, the S stood for speculation. If investors speculate that a currency will depreciate, demand for that currency is likely to fall, and vice versa. And the Y stood for relative income levels. Tipsy is a useful way to remember the determinants of demand and supply for currencies in the Forex market. A change in any of these factors could cause the demand or the supply of US dollars to increase or decrease. But I'm going to walk through a specific scenario here that could lead to a change in these equations. Let's look at a situation in which the Royal Bank of India wished to revalue the rupee. What if the Central Bank of India wanted to strengthen its own currency against the US dollar? How would the Central Bank intervene in the foreign exchange market in order to revalue its own currency? One way it could do that is by raising domestic interest rates. So a revaluation would result from an increase in interest rates in India. This would cause Indian investors to demand less US dollars because they would demand less investments in American assets due to the now relatively lower interest rate on US investments. Therefore, the demand for US dollars in India would decrease, causing the dollar to depreciate. So the exchange rate of the dollar would fall and this would therefore lead to an increase in the exchange rate of the rupee. The rupee would be revalued or appreciate. How would this look in our demand and supply model? How could we reflect the devaluation of the dollar and the revaluation of the rupee in this graph? Well, we could look at our demand equation here. If there were a decrease in demand for dollars due to a higher interest rate in India, this would shift the demand curve to the left and possibly change the C variable or the price coefficient of demand. For instance, let's assume that the higher interest rates in India cause a change in the demand for dollars because Indian investors demand less investments in the US economy now. So the new demand equation is QD equals 200 minus 4.5P. Notice that both the A and the B variables in our demand equation changed. Indians are now more responsive to an increase in the exchange rate of the dollar, and they'll demand 4.5 billion fewer dollars for every one rupee increase in the exchange rate. In addition, at an exchange rate of zero, only 200 billion dollars would be demanded now instead of 300 billion dollars. What impact will this have on the equilibrium exchange rate? Let's set the new demand equation equal to the original supply equation and find the new exchange rate. QD equals 200 minus 4.5P. So we'll set that equal to the supply equation of negative 100 plus 6P. Move the 100 over here. I've got 300 equals, move the 4.5 over here, 10.5P. Divide both sides by 10.5. And I've got a new exchange rate, the price of the US dollar in India is 300 divided by 10.5 gives me an exchange rate of 28.57 rupees. So 28.57 rupees per dollar. I can show that on my graph as 
new equilibrium exchange rate resulting from a fall in demand for dollars. Now I know my new Q intercept is going to be 200, which is here. I also know that Indians are now more responsive to price changes in the dollar. So my slope should actually decrease as well. The demand curve will become flatter. I can connect my Q intercept of 200 with my new equilibrium exchange rate of 28.57. I've got my new demand for dollars. The increase in Indian interest rates caused a decrease in demand for dollars in India as investors choose to keep their money in the Indian economy rather than investing in U.S. assets. So I've got a new demand for dollars. Let's go through one more scenario here. What if the Royal Bank of India wished to devalue the rupee? They wanted to weaken their currency against the U.S. dollar. How could they do this? What intervention can lead to a devaluation of the rupee? Well, since they want the rupee to get weaker, what they need to do is increase the value of U.S. dollars. And the way they can do this, we're not going to talk about interest rates now. We're going to talk about foreign exchange market interventions. The Indian Central Bank could print its own currency, the rupee, and increase the supply of rupees on the foreign exchange market in the United States and buy dollars. This would decrease the supply of dollars on the forex market in India. So the supply of dollars would decrease as the Indian Central Bank, the Central Bank, buys dollars on the forex market. Let's go through one scenario here in which the supply of dollars decreases. Assume the new supply equation is equal to negative 200 plus 6p. Because of the central bank's intervention, there will be less dollars supplied on the forex market. The Indian central bank has printed rupees and bought up some of the dollars on the forex market. This should cause the dollar to become more scarce and the dollar exchange rate to rise, which would correspond with the devaluation of the rupee. The rupee would be getting weaker. Let's calculate the effect this has on the exchange rate. We can set the new supply equation of negative 200 plus 6p equal to our original demand equation. We're going to start from the original equation here, which was 300 minus 4p. I'm going to move the 200 over here and the 4 over here. So I've got 10p now equals 5 100. Divide both sides by 10, and I've got the new equilibrium exchange rate of the dollar, which is 50 rupees per dollar. I can show that on my graph now. The new equilibrium exchange rate following the central bank's intervention will be 50 rupees per dollar. Now the supply of dollars in India has decreased, but the slope has not changed. I did not change my D variable in the supply equation only the C variable. So I can show this decrease in supply as a shift to the left of my supply curve to S1. The central bank's intervention through printing rupees and buying dollars in India has caused the supply of dollars in the forex market to decrease and an appreciation of the dollar which corresponds with the depreciation of the rupee or a devaluation of the rupee. So just to recap here, we've gone through a couple of scenarios in which the demand and the supply of dollars in India has changed due to central bank policy. In the first scenario, the central bank wanted to revalue the rupee so it raised domestic interest rates, causing demand for dollars and demand for dollar denominated investments to fall in India. This shifted the demand curve to the left. We had a new demand equation and new equilibrium exchange rate of 28.57 rupees per dollar. The rupee has gotten stronger following the central bank's increase in interest rates. In the second scenario, the central bank wanted to devalue the rupee, so it intervened in the forex market by buying up dollars. This caused the dollar to get stronger. The new exchange rate of the dollar was 50 rupees per dollar. This corresponds with a weaker rupee, hence the rupee has been devalued. The purpose of this lesson was to show how we can use demand and supply equations to calculate equilibrium exchange rates, to plot demand and supply curves on a graph, and then to calculate the effect of a change in the demand or supply of a country's currency on the foreign exchange market. Mm -hmm.